tracking and that's a very unique story of a very unique step that a Kerala couple has taken. So this couple has been married for nearly three decades, for 30 years, but they've gone in to register what was a nikah as a Muslim couple after almost 30 years as a special marriage under the Special Marriage Act. And they have done this purely to secure, secure the inheritance of their daughters. They have three daughters, no male heir. And under Islamic personal laws, the daughters cannot inherit all of your property. If you have a daughter and a son, they don't get the same share. And if you have only daughters, part of your inheritance then has to be split again uh, with other male relatives. So this couple has sought the protection of the Special Marriages Act to ensure that their three daughters get the entirety of their inheritance. I want to quickly break down what the Islamic Shariat law says and why this couple has gone the way they have. The couple is also joining us exclusively in just a bit from now. But here are certain questions that emerge as far as Islamic personal laws are concerned and how they are not quite equal when it comes to the girl child versus the male child. So the wife, for example, gets only one-eighth of the husband's property if there is no lineal descendant from that companionship. In case of a lineal descendant, the wife takes one-fourth of the property. Remember, these inheritance laws are different for other communities. Daughters cannot inherit more than half of what a son gets. So the share to begin with between two siblings based on their gender is very different. On top of that, if you only have daughters, part of the inheritance then has to be sh uh, shared to other male relatives. They could be your cousins, your uh, siblings, children, etc. But the entire inheritance cannot be uh, given to your daughters alone. And the estate of a Muslim can only pass to a Muslim. So these are some basic Sharia structures, especially pertaining to inheritance. The big question we're asking today is on the back of what this couple has decided to do after 30 years of their marriage. Is it not time for gender neutral laws in Islamic personal laws as well? We're not quite talking about UCC, but within each personal law, should there be not greater parity when it comes to the boy child and the girl child? And remember, this couple decided to do this on March 8 when we celebrate Women's Day. So this is a message that they're sending to the larger society as well. Muslim, Kudumatil, Parakan, the Pangutil, Matru, Lurikinda, and the Vivedundu. Akutilki, Samothile, Mati, Samothatil Parna Kutil Kula, Social Status, Alangali, Sotavagastil, Tulida, Nalgadam, and the Sunday Snariga Matra, and the Dundu de Chigan. Tilje did a message on the Nangal already, your customary marriage, Kaina, and the Ajiva to Munotu. But she knew her Avisham, where another Kutil Tavu confidence with Akakan the Ridil. Discriminatory, I told her. Younger the Kalisha Makal Purna Maita Digar and Verinilla. Avreda Kasins, Angutil and Angel Avaka, full Adigar. I want to first go across to our special newsmakers joining us on the show today. Shakur Vakil, who is the advocate and the husband in this very special couple. Dr. Sheena Shakur, she is an academician, actually teaches law, uh, wife uh, in this uh, case. And I thank you for speaking uh, to us on Plain Speak. Uh, Sheena Ji, I want to begin with you. This is a never before heard of kind of decision that you have taken. A very unique step of uh, re-registering or remarrying yourself but under the protection of the Special Marriages Act. Could you begin by explaining to me why you thought, now both of you know law, why did you think that this was the absolute necessity for you, that you couldn't work this out any other way? Actually, this is not a remarriage. Uh, we uh, got uh, the Muslim personal law marriage uh, custom. Uh, so we did a customary marriage in 1994, October 6th, and uh, we are uh, together. And in this wedlock, we have three girls. Now, uh, this idea of getting registered under the Special Marriage Act, 
this is only the uh, registration of the marriage that has already uh, been happened in 1994. This is not a second marriage. And uh, the Special Marriage Act has provision for um, uh, registering the marriage that already happened. So that is how we are doing it under Section 50. Now, why we wrote this is the question. Now, uh, sis, see, uh, right from uh, the understanding of law uh, since our graduation days while uh, studying the family law and then to start practicing. And when I did my higher studies and all, I did my PhD in family law. When uh, everything or the, uh, these sort of things are happening, we uh, understood what uh, how uh, unequal uh, distribution is taking place to, uh, with the inheritance rights for the girls children now uh, we have discussed this is with uh, our friends whenever there is an occasion that we address uh, during this uh, special occasions like women's day or um, gender justice uh, uh, campaign or any uh, district legal service authority or uh, legal services authorities program where a lot number of uh, people gather and uh, they uh, raise questions like why is this happening to us only when uh, all the other uh, girls in uh, other uh, fa families like Hindus, Christians or Parsis even uh, when uh, this uh, inheritance rights are equally um, I mean, people for uh, in mm. many other girls and also their own cousins. So when either of us are no more, uh, our children will inherit only two by third of the, uh, in their, uh, whatever is left. Two and the rest will be going to other, uh, uh, our brothers. No. Now the question is, mm. uh, after uh, our uh, I mean life or while our children would inherit, it is the question is not like it should not go to our brothers children or brothers yeah. rather it is a question of why our children our daughters are not treated same as to that of a, that of their uh, male cousins or Absolutely. any other person Absolutely. any other no. girls who are belonging to uh, or uh, who are having the faith in other religion so there is a wide range of inequality Absolutely which is prohibited or against which there is guaranteed protection under the constitution of India. Right. You know, you raised a very important point. This is not about not wanting to share your property with your other family members. This is a charge that has been thrown at you that you guys are selfish. You are not willing to share your property. But the basic question is that why should your daughters not have the same rights as the uh, sons? and not have the same rights as other daughters in other religions. So, uh, Shukurji, I want to ask you, how do you look at the reaction that has come into your action? Because a lot of the orthodox Muslim clerics are saying that this is selfish, this was also unnecessary, you could have given, you could have found other ways to distribute on in your inheritance to your daughters, and this is all a drama. How, why did you feel the need to do this? Because you also are a lawyer, you understand law. And what would you say to the reactions that have been coming in on this action? Actually, <clears throat> the clerics have no role in the society. Uh, they have no voice in the society. Just they are saying something and some followers are following there. Actually, the Muslim society of Kerala is far, far away from the, these clerics. They're this, you know, uh, the recently, uh, international football match, FIFA is going there uh, at Qatar. Uh, some clerics says that you don't you don't watch football match. It is against Islam, and for uh, very fortunately, all the Muslim youth in Kerala ignored that fatwa. Like this, here yeah, they are trying to uphold. They are trying to uh, restrain the Scorban family. They are facing inequality and uh, discrimination on the basis of sex in Muslim community. They they want to protect that 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 old custom prevailing in the Muslim community during the uh, in pre-independence day. They, this act is came in force in 1937. In that time, there was we have no uh, constitution as that was we co accepted our constitution. In the year 1950. Hmm. 
before 1950 the this this law uh, i mean the application of muslim person law was came in force in 1937 at that time there was the, we have no constitution the constitution came in force only in 1950 okay, i get your point my case is the the the, the 1937 act is not uh, up, uphold the, the constitutional validity or constitutional right of a muslim girl she belongs to a muslim family only because she be, belongs to a muslim family that that is why we are challenging this is this is against the fundamental right so your contention is that the muslim personal law at least in this case is against the values of the constitution and today when we have the constitution in india then the muslim child especially the girl child should not be denied her equal right so in a way you're questioning the personal law itself do you believe that these are set of laws that should be done away with because they are not equal and everybody should go by the constitution according to me and for several other scholars this is not islamic this is the against the spirit of allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are not allowing inequality among the persons on the basis of sex and uh, creed or caste islam i think islam is always uh, keeping all the persons equal and islam always insisting equal tre- treatment among men and women and this person law application act is against the spirit of islam and against the spirit of teaching of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay shina ji i want to ask you uh, this is a sub- something that is still being practiced by many muslims you yourself say and know that from your experience do you think the society in itself should shun away these practices they should do away these practices and anywhere where the girl child is treated less than equal to the male child it's time for that to happen now actually the thing that we i have to understand is if this is india let it be anything that happens in any islamic countries we have a constitution where we say that this is we the people of india have adopted enacted and constituted this for ourselves which means whatever general laws are prevailing in india should be applicable to anybody in india so in that sense the constitution then the question is the constitution also says about article 25 which permits a religion what is this religious uh, yes. right permitted under article 25 of course you can follow any religion of your choice now the problem is first of all what we have to understand is this any uh, uh, succession laws or inheritance laws that is prevailing in india and also the uh, muslim personal law says that an individual during his lifetime whatever he or she earns for his own livelihood and for his family existence uses expense and whatever is left behind after his death will have to devolve or go into the uh, immediate next generation which means they are essentially the children so there is no uh, uh, difference that is being placed between uh, son or daughter or like you can't read it out like it will if there are no children or if there is only girls it should go to the brothers like so this is only an interpretation given by the muslim personal um, uh, law followers like uh, we do whoever interpret the next thing is when there is a law saying that uh, uh, the personal laws uh, can be followed like article 25 it also says that uh, when you uh, the law has to change with the time like law is not static it has always been an experience so that is why even then article the 25 is there we have now triple talaq amended or it has been uh, struck down by the honorable supreme court later we have the muslim women protection of rights on uh, marriage act earlier we have the muslim women protection of rights on 1986 which says that you, the muslim women can uh, argue or make claim uh, or they are entitled for maintenance after their marriage is done our uh, marriage is over which is actually the, against the practicing uh, muslim uh, muslim personal like once the wife is divorced they are not eligible okay. for any maintenance from the husband only they are eligible for only idda whereas 
the um, maintenance. So that is the human try that happens in 1980s, but still we are following it. So what happened? And uh, see, this is not the only way of uh, addressing this issue of inequality or discrimination. This is only one step. Like uh, when we uh, get uh, registration under SMA in 1954, you will get the, the privilege yes. of uh, um, in enjoying the provisions of 1925 Indian Succession Act, which says right. that you can uh, be okay, free. But you are saying or, that this is um, not the only can, way uh, to, uh, to go around as far as these customs are concerned. There are other ways as well. I want to very quickly ask you, Shakurji, I want to come to you. The concept which you're effectively hinting at is the concept of UCC, that we have a constitution and as far as matters like inheritance, marriages, divorce are concerned, there should be a uniform set of laws. Are you in favor of UCC then? No, I, be, I don't believe I don't believe in uniform civil court because we can have, India is a culturally diverse society. In, in, in one example, in Tamil Nadu, a man man ha, can marry his sister's daughter, if you. But okay. in Kerala, that is not possible. Yes, yes. Yeah, and se several state states have different type of culture, and several tribes are different type of culture. We cannot uniform it in one under one law. I, that is against the spirit of Indian culture and Indian diversity. And we are not agreeing with the uh, uniform civil Moreover. In, in, in Hindu, there was some difference in some discrimination provisions in Hindu Succession Act and in uh, Indian Succession Act. All that uh, discriminations are corrected on, by way of amendment and uh, court verdict. That, uh, that is why we can ca correct the Muslim inheritance law on the, by way of uh, amendment or by uh, way of in, uh, interfering of court verdicts. Okay, so you're saying instead of bringing in a uniform code for all, within the individual personal laws, there should be changes and amendments brought in to be progressive and be with the times and certainly eliminate discrimination. I want to ask you very quickly, finally, are you nervous? Are you afraid? Because there have been very strong reactions to your step. You've sent out a message which is against very orthodox Islamism. Are you at all worried about your safety? No, 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 no danger, no fear. We are very free. That this is Kerala. The Kerala is governed by a left government. Every person in Kerala are very safe and secure in every aspect. In the 90, Article 19 is there. We can express our will and uh, opinion very freely in Kerala. Okay. And Sheena Ji, can I ask you finally, uh, you've set a precedent. Do you feel that more people should follow this from the Muslim community so that the girl child could also be treated on par? Yes, I told you, uh, this is a, uh, just one step that we can. And we we'll let people uh, come to know about this provision under the SMA Act 1954. And whoever has uh, girl child only and whomsoever worry about uh, their uh, daughters, uh, this uh, I mean, confidence, uh, the situation where they are not confident enough, or uh, if they feel that there is an inequality existing, then they can definitely uh, come through this. But I wish and I hope that there are many in our parts in the future. Okay. I thank you, uh, Sheena Ji and Shakur Ji, for joining us as our newsmakers. I want to go across to the guests who are down to On the show with me, Rahul Ishwar, author and activist, Ambar Zaidi, activist, Danish Qureshi is a political analyst and Atikur Rahman, Islamic scholar. I have only a few minutes, so I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to express their opinion on this. Atikur Rahman, I start with you. What do you make of this couple's step? Do you think this will send a larger message that from within, not by external forces of the government or anyone else, but from within the community must bat for equal rights? Shivani, I, I can, you know, support this couple, you know, getting marriage in a special marriage act. There is no doubt about it. They have every right to do it. But I do not understand that their claim that if they are going by the special marriages act, only then the daughters will be inheriting. 
is completely a flawed argument because obviously as i understand in their story they don't have a son if they don't have a son directly the daughters are getting all inheritance of the parents rights so this is a marriage of more than convenience than other than, uh, other than anything else what are they claiming? I do not understand. No, but they are saying. The, the once again, once again, gets, I won't interrupt you after this. But, 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 both of them, both of them are students of law. One is an advocate, the other teaches law. They surely know what they're huh? talking about. And they won't do this unless their daughters were free to get all of their inheritance. As Sheena ji just told me, their daughters, three daughters can only get two thirds of their inheritance. The other one third has to be given to other male relatives. Yes. No, no, if the only if they had a son, if they had a son, the son gets double than the daughter. Otherwise, the other inheritance, you know, but even members that's of wrong. the family do not count over here, Shivani. They are not but counted over wrong. here. The a fact couple, that the son will get double than the daughter, son, these are all sets of laws that I'm talking about. These are all sets of laws I'm talking about. These are, uh, don't it. you think there's a problem with this? So, It, it, why are you then, then not, you know, endorsing the fact that the same male person gives to her uh, to, to his wife also, and the daughter also gets from the husband's side? That's not the question. So it's a matter of equity rather than equality, Shivani. The arguments are flawed over here. Obviously, the that's daughters because are women traditionally are not holders of, the of these parents. inheritances. If women were holders of these inheritances, then you will get from your mother too. And people do get from their mother's share as well. But if you keep reducing women's share, generation after generation, then it basically puts women out of inheritance ownings, ownership. But let me bring in Danish Qureshi. Danish Qureshi, what this couple is saying is that, you know, the clergy is also misinterpreting Islam. What they are setting as rules for the Muslim community is actually not what the Quran or Islam truly preaches. Quran preaches equality between male and female, but our social laws have become absolutely inequitable. Danish Qureshi. Shivani, the, what is the main problem is that, that uh, we have Special Marriage Act and the Hindu Marriage Act. Now, problem is that, that if we are talking about, if he is having a fear of, uh, uh, about the succession act, we have Indian Succession Act and Hindu Succession Act. The, uh, what they want to clear, I didn't get what is the aim behind this marriage. As a Muslim, he has a power to give to uh, give a wasiyat or he can give a will that the distribution of my property should be held according to... Let, let me complete. Distribution of my property should be held according to the Indian Succession Act. That's it. Nobody can intervene in that matter because it's the, the, the private decision of its own property. Not in the ancestral property. As per in the ancestral property, they has to uh, do as per the Islamic law. Or if if they believe in uh, Islamism, that's the main thing. Their father, their father, their mothers are being uh, so married that, according to Islam. The question I am asking you, the question I am asking you is that isn't it time that under Islamic laws, there should be a recognition that these differences should go? That's the basic fundamental question today. Shivani. We already have two acts, Indian Succession Act and Hindu Succession Act. Even they are not equal. Then what we are talking about? Mm. No, but the differences under Islamic law, especially when it comes to inheritance, don't you think that's a problem? Forget what everybody else is doing, but within the community, is there not a need to set these laws or these practices right? I think... I think there is, uh, uh, there is no need of doing that. Each and every community having its own personal law. Even then, the ulemas of the Islams are uh, enough to do if they want to reform, uh, want to make a reform. Okay. Amber Zaidi, please come in on this. A lot of people are saying, why did this couple even have to do this? Because they could have found other ways. But I think the couple is sending a very strong message. That under Islamic laws, that protection is not there for their daughters and they want to protect their daughters' futures. Absolutely right, Shivani. And they, uh, I uh, wholeheartedly wel welcome whatever uh, the step they have taken for the protection of their uh, daughters' uh, rights. Because uh, uh, the people they were discussing on the panel that uh, they have uh, uh, a full right to take uh, succession or this thing under Sharia law. But I want to uh, make one thing clear here that there is no clarity 
on uh, uh, um, on such succession in Muslim Personal Law Application Act 1937. That's why they must have taken the step. They have remarried under Special Marriage Act. And I think uh, um, as for the Constitution, everybody has equal right as per the Article uh, 14. And uh, I think there should not be any further debate on this, that uh, why they have taken this step. Because uh, Shivani, I personally get so many calls from different parts of India. And uh, the day before yesterday, on Saturday only, I got a call from Maharashtra. Uh, and a similar case, uh, um, a woman, she was uh, five months pregnant when uh, her husband died. And uh, her uh, uh, in-laws, they tried to terminate the uh, baby uh, then and now she she has one daughter and they've been fighting for her uh, rights succession rights and they are and her uh, in-laws they are not allowing her to take anything or uh, jewelry or any inheritance okay. nothing and she's been fighting for her rights so people Amma, were saying I that think the point that you're making is what i was asking earlier also there needs to be clarity and it seems like there is no clarity and a lot of the interpretation is according to the clergy and they are saying whatever they want. Absolutely right. That's what I'm saying that there should be clarity on that. There are so many, uh, you know, uh, there are no clarity, clarity on there are so many complexities in the law. Uh, people say it's a different thing. And as for the Islam, we, uh, the clergy and uh, what is the written in. And one point I want to make clear is that Sharia is not something that 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 is sacrosanct. It can be uh, reformed, it can be changed as per the time and the need of people. Why can't we simply, you know, uh, come out and uh, talk about reforms? So if something is going wrong in our society, we should okay. at least come out and discuss that there is a problem and we should address such uh, injustice okay. towards that, that's, uh, that's, that's That's the fundamental question I want to take across to Rahul Ishwar also, the question of reform. Now, we sense that there is a resistance to reform as far as Islamic laws are concerned. Reform is par for the course for all other communities, but not so much for Muslims. Do you think that's really the problem that needs to be corrected here? And like this Muslim couple, it possibly will have to be driven from inside. Shivani ji, as every community, even our law commission and to Pujani Sarsang Chalak Guruji Goldwalkar rightly points out that reform should come from within. And every community over a period of time, there are differences in interpretation, there needs to be consensus, there needs to be evolution in understanding, interpretation and implementation of religious aspects. And please remember, every religion has a spiritual set of laws and a social set of laws. The spiritual thing is, you know, in, uh, beyond change or they are eternal, God-given. At the same point of time, the social aspects are subjected to evolution. For example, a very simple question. If I have if a Muslim father has one crore rupees and after his death, it has to be partitioned along with the brother. Similarly, if he has one crore loan, will any of the relatives be able to take up his loan? Will they be able to take up his debt? So there needs to be an understanding and there needs to evolve. And here also, you know, uh, the three Muslim girls, he has three Muslim girls. I personally know Advocate Shukur as he is from Kerala, my land. You know, if uh, you know, he has a son, they will get all the property. But if he has no son, then a relative or a brother has to be given that property. Will the brother be able to take up the debt he has? I don't think any brother will do that. That's the reason why I'm a conservative right. Hindu. I'm a believer. I support all the believing Muslims at the same point of time. When there are questions of such things, we need to consult and bring about a consensus and not be anti any kind of these kind of meetings. So we need to be open minded. We need to be positive okay. and we need to be forward looking. All right. I leave it at that. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. Possibly time that at least when it comes to simple matters of social life, there needs to be parity between genders and there needs to be equality and there needs to be uniformity. But I don't mean between religions, but within a religion, we should know very clearly where one stands so that we, these issues don't crop up. I thank our guests for joining us. I have to slip into a very short break. On the other side, I'll get you more of what I was doing in Ahmedabad earlier today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart were here at the Narendra Modi Stadium watching the first day of the fourth and final test match between India and Australia. We'll get you some highlights of what the two premiers got on to and some what people told me here in Ahmedabad. Stay tuned for that on the other side. Parents. So this is something